cover of your service folder. And you keep in mind just the, the readings that we've had this morning from God's Word. That idea that Jesus is coming back, and he's coming to judge. What are the things that are going on in your mind? Perhaps a bit nervous, right? Something we've never experienced before, so uh, anytime I'm experiencing something new, I'm a little, usually a little nervous just trying to figure out how this is going to work. Perhaps a bit uneasy. It certainly will be something awesome, right? Perhaps there's some anxiety that, that goes through that. There's an awareness of my sin, right? And then you have in, 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 in your mind perhaps that picture Daniel gives us. Right in that first lesson we heard this morning of when Jesus comes back and he's, he's got this throne that rolls out and he's, his hair is white and he's, he's there in all of his awesome glory. It will certainly be one of those things that, that perhaps is just jaw-dropping. As Jesus returns to earth with all of his angels, right, and the trumpet call of God, and he comes back to judge. At the same time, even as a redeemed child of God, one who is, is confident in, in God's forgiveness and who knows that I, I stand before God perfect and holy and righteous because of what my Savior has done for me, I think I might be a bit uncomfortable. You, you look at any time in Scripture where a sinner stands before God and it's a picture of uncomfortableness, isn't it? And that's probably saying it as, as lightly and nicely as possible. Often, it's abject fear and terror. Why? Because when confronted with perfection and holiness and perfect righteousness, a sinner can't help but be terrified. Because their sin becomes even that much more apparent, huh? And so as you hear those words that we're going to be looking at a little bit more closely this morning from, from the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus describes his, his, his return and how he is going to come back with all of his angels and all nations are going to be spread before him and he's going to, to come and he's going to judge, that sinful part of me is a bit scared. But even in those words from our Savior, we, we find comfort for us as believers. Comfort in the fact that our Savior is coming to judge. Look at how he, he starts that, that, uh, his description there. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All, all the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate the people one from another as a sh shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Right? You have that picture of, of, of our Savior coming back in all of his glory, right? No longer is he that, that, that human born, or no longer does he just have that human nature born uh, in Bethlehem. But now he comes back with the full power and glory and majesty that is his as true God. Right? And he's surrounded by all of the angels. And he comes with one purpose. To judge. Right, so he gathers all nations before him. He gathers every single living soul that has, has lived from Adam and Eve until that moment when he returns. He gathers all of them before him in order to judge. All the nations. All the nations, you and I, as, as believers in God's church, as, as, as members of God's family, right, that have been called to, to go and proclaim the good news to. All those nations. Standing now before God. And what does he begin to do? Judge, huh? Separate the sheep from the goats. He, he moves some people to the right, some people to the left. As he says, as, and he has that picture of a, a shepherd who, se shep a shepherd who separates. That's hard to say. A shepherd who separates the sheep from the goats. Right? It, it's not difficult for a shepherd to easily tell the difference between a sheep and a goat. It's not as though there's any question. It's not as though there's any confusion or any uncertainty. 
right? He, he, he differentiates between the two and he puts the sheep on the right, he puts the goats on the left. He judges. And then he goes on and he describes the basis for his judgment, doesn't he? He says, this is why this group is over here. And this is why this group is over here. Right? He, he says it, right? In verse, in verse 34, he says, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. And to those on his left, he says, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. And then he gives examples of why and how those people showed that they were blessed by their father and and, and those who were cursed. Right? Hunger, feeding those who are hungry, giving a drink to those who are thirsty, clothing those, visiting those who were sick and in prison. And both sides kind of react the same way, don't they? Lord, when did we see you? When When did we not do these things? Or when did we do these things? He says, whatever you did for the least of these, you've done for me. Or whatever you didn't do for the least of these, you didn't do for me. And so it's real easy, as we contemplate and think about our Savior's return, and we hear that account from Jesus, to to almost draw the conclusion, well, if I'm feeding the sick, or feeding the hungry, and giving drink to those who are thirsty, and clothing those who don't have clothes, and and helping those who are are sick and, and needy, and visiting those who are in prison in the hospital, well, that's what's going to get me there, right? If that were the case, he would have started there, huh? If that were the case, perhaps that nervousness and anxiety in our hearts would be a bit greater, huh? Because I look at what my God calls me to do as a child of God, and I'm not always doing that. In fact, when I look at that list, what becomes painfully obvious to me is just how selfish I am. Right? I I look at the, the nice house my God has blessed me with. I open my pantry and I can look at all the food that my God has graciously given to me. I can walk into my closet and see all the clothes that my God has has graciously clothed me with. And what becomes painfully obvious is just how selfish I am. And, and, And perhaps that becomes clear then when those things begin to be taken away a bit. And I get upset. Now understand, in saying that, Having a nice house isn't, isn't wrong. Having a closet full of clothes isn't wrong, or a pantry full of food isn't wrong. But at the same time, when I see that selfishness in my heart that refuses to share, or becomes upset when those things are taking, taken from me, or when I look and say, well, somebody else will take care of them, That's also not right either, is it? And what's terrifying is that when God says, well, when you didn't do those things, well, there's that separation, isn't there? So where's the comfort? Where's the the comfort for, for people like you and me whose failures and whose selfishness becomes painfully evident, right? Who who we see that that part of us each and every day. Look again at verse 34. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. There's there's no reason for you and I to be anxious or nervous. Why? Because we've been blessed by our father. And just look at at how our Heavenly Father has blessed us. Not just with with physical blessings, but more importantly with with spiritual blessings, huh? That we have a Heavenly Father who cursed His own Son with all of our sin so that we would be blessed. 
A heavenly father who took rebellious people like you and me who are are selfish and self-centered and sends his son and in the most selfless way possible lives perfectly and dies to take all of that away so that none of it is on our record. We have a, a heavenly father who so loved us that he was willing to well, to sacrifice his own son and have that son forsaken by him, right? Have that complete separation from, from God and his love so that you and I would never experience that. We have a, a heavenly father who loves us and has blessed us and has forgiven us so that he's adopted us into his family. And now as as members of God's family, members of God's household, right? He says, what's yours now is this inheritance. It's not something that, 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 that you can declare by right, but simply you've been adopted into his family and now what is God's is now yours. And he describes that, you know, on the, on the end, here, take, take what's yours. This inheritance, this eternal home prepared for you since creation. What's yours is now eternal life with your Savior. What's yours is now perfect holiness and righteousness. What's yours is now the right to stand before God without sin and to rejoice in all that he has done for you. To be able to see God face to face without terror. Man, you and I have, are blessed, aren't we? Blessed by our Heavenly Father. And he says the way that that has begun to show itself in your life, the way that love is beginning to reflect itself in, in you and in, in your life, well, is through those simple acts of love and mercy. Right? That, that Jesus describes. Right? That we talked about in our children's message. When I see how blessed God has made, has made me, when I see God's unbelievable love for me, I can't help but begin to, to respond to that love in, in thankfulness. Right? So that when I see a, a person in need, I don't just walk by and assume somebody else is going to take care of it. But in love and mercy, I, I help. And, and, and Jesus isn't just limiting us to, well, well, if someone's hungry, give them something to eat, or if they're thirsty, give them something to drink. But, man, that begins to, to take and look in, in every aspect of our life. Right? It means when you're at school and you see somebody hurting or sad, right, that, that you reach out to them and you help them. Or at work, right? When you, you've heard about something that's gone on, you, you go and you reach out and, and you help them. Or you, you hear about a need somebody has. I, I experienced it this week. Right? As all of y'all have been, been praying for me and, and my family. Those are those simple acts of, of love and mercy Jesus is talking about. Loves that, that, that demonstrates not only a love and a concern, for the person you're, you're dealing with and helping, but ultimately a, a love for the Savior who's died for you. Right? And when, those, when that faith begins to show itself in those simple acts of love and mercy, when a faith that rejoices in the blessings that God has given, those spiritual blessings God has given, man, on the last day, we may question God and say, well, when did I ever do those things, Lord? Right, God, and, and God has this big picture view and he says, well, you've, boy, you were kind to, to those people at work. You helped to that person at school. You prayed for this person who was in need. Right, you, you showed that simple kindness and love and mercy that I've called at you as a child of God to show. And because you are so blessed and because that faith demonstrated itself in such loving kindness, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, and enjoy that eternal inheritance that's been prepared for you. 
Man, as, as children of God, when we, we see it from that perspective, huh? Sure, my, my sinful nature might make me a, a little bit nervous about Jesus' return. Because as a sinner, I'm going to stand before an, an, a perfect and all, almighty and, and righteous God. But I'm also doing it as a sinner who's been blessed by my Heavenly Father. A sinner who's been forgiven by my Savior. A, a sinner who's been adopted into God's family and who now has an e eternal inheritance waiting for me. Yeah? Jesus is coming. And he's coming to judge. But he's already judged Jesus in my place. And because of that, I have nothing but joy and eternal life to look forward to. Amen. Our Savior Lutheran Church is located on the south side of Birmingham off Highway 280. We are on Dunnett Valley Road, about three quarters of a mile east of Treetop Family Adventure and Sports Blast. Our Sunday services begin at 1015 with Sunday School and Bible Class at 9 o'clock. We welcome visitors and hope to see you soon. For more information, please visit our website at OurSaviorBirmingham.com. Click on Sermons at the top of the page for a copy of today's service folder. You can also find us online on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.